Hey guys, I'm PJ Tour rookie Sam Ryder, and you're, you're watching, watching the Stripe Show with Travis Fulton. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Stripe Show. I'm your host, Travis Fulton, and look at here. We're here at Monday after the Masters. Darius Rucker, Hootie and the Blowfish, their yearly event benefiting charities here, junior golf in South Carolina, and also children's education programs. It's a great event. So many tour players are here, celebrities from all over the country. I got to catch up with a lot of them. We're going to get to all of that. It's a pack show here on the Stripe Show, and let's get you striping it. Before we get to Monday after the Masters, let's go back one day, Sunday, at the Masters in Augusta National, a terrific finish to our first major championship of the year. And of course, Patrick Reed, it was his next step, right? He had to get that major championship under belt. He's won on the PGA Tour. He's been absolute dynamite on the Ryder Cup team, winning seems like every single match play event. And he kind of got it to a match play situation there Sunday at the Masters and held off a charging Ricky Fowler and Jordan Spieth to get his first screen jack. And it was a gallant effort from Jordan Spieth. I mean, good grief, he was on he was on track to shoot a course record 62 and then he clipped that tree there on the left hand side and had 310 left into it on a second shot but an amazing 64 Ricky Fowler another second place finish coming up just a little bit short so enough with Sunday at the Masters it's time to get back to here Monday after the Masters again we're here at the beautiful Dye Club here in South Carolina Darius Rucker Hootie and the Blowfish their yearly event we're going to get to all of that but before we get to that let's take a look at your swing and the first one today and show us your swing is James James what do you got all right James hey thanks for the video here good stuff got the hybrid uh, first thing here Make sure you don't lean that shaft too far forward uh, with that hybrid this way. Might bring the hands back just a touch with the ball position um, a little bit more forward in the stance, and I'll show you that there. You do a nice job going back here where you turn kind of into that right side and around that right hip. That's good stuff there. I love how the left knee is pointing now behind the golf ball. This is a nice full turn into the top of the swing. Now, as you come down, I think your downswing is predominantly more of the arms and the torso. We're not getting a lot of leg activity on the downswing where we get the weight kind of falling to the left and we get the hips opening up more through the strike. You can see there you're pretty square and as a result you have to kind of flip the hands here. You can see how the hands kind of flip underneath that right hand scooping and a lot of that uh, can decrease the control of the club face through the impact zone. So what I want to show you is as you start your downswing, I want to show you how to get the weight left and I want to show you how to get these hips rotating a little sooner so we can take these angles in the wrist and lean the shaft a bit more forward and that'll give you a little bit more control of the face. All right. So one thing I'd address and then I'm going to show you a couple things here in the swing to help the hybrid. All right, James, good stuff. I love people that send in videos with those longer irons, hybrids, and fairy woods because this is a big opportunity for so many of you. So I got my hybrid here. The first thing is when you set up to the hybrid, I want you to make sure that the handle is pretty much more in line. Don't get, don't get too aggressive this way with the shaft lean. Set the ball up kind of on the left chest area and then keep the handle a little bit more in line. A little forward shaft lean is not going to hurt you. Now, the second thing is what I want you to do is I want you to get a little bit more aggressive with the lower body. Right now, you're predominantly just kind of with the upper body, right? It's more kind of the arms and the torso, and there's not a lot going on to here. So I'm going to go back to this face on camera here for a second. And what I want you to do is I want you to feel like your weight kind of falls into your lead side, and then I want you to start letting this left hip start to open up. Now, here's a good drill. What you're going to do is you're going to kind of fall left, and then you're going to really kind of boom open up the left hip and then stop it right at impact where everything's in line. So it looks like this. Right? And your torso is just following that. So I'm going into my left and then I'm boom, pushing up and bringing it in line 
to impact and anticipating that impact position where I feel my hips more open and not so lazy through impact. So we're gonna set up here. I'm gonna do that, boom, right there at impact, feeling everything rotate. And there it is. So I got my left hip to really kind of snap up this way and open up and got more out of the way and got that lower body work. And I think that's gonna really help you with every single club in your back. Time for another show us your swing. This time, it's Tyler. Hey Tyler, really good swing. Uh, lots of good stuff here. I like how the club goes back. Looks like you've got good structure with your arms. Great turn, love the space between the knees there. And then coming down, lots of good things here as well. The biggest thing is when you swing through, you see the club face right there kind of flip over. See how we can't see the face. So a fair amount of face rotation through the impact zone. And if we wanted to decrease that a little bit and firm up impact, maybe a little bit more reliable, what we could do is coming down is instead of your lead wrist being in a cupped position, so you see your lead wrist right there, it's got a slight angle to it, kind of a cupped position. Usually when we see that, uh, the body won't rotate too aggressively through impact, so we can't see a lot of your left side there at impact, and then your hands have to take over and rotate the face. So what we could do is we could come down and start to flatten out that lead wrist a little bit, get that left wrist here to be a bit flatter, and as we do that, then that left hip could start to rotate and get out of the way more, showing us more of the left hip at impact. And that'll slow down the face rotation through the strike and perhaps give you a little bit more control. But you got a beautiful swing, lots of good things. Let me show you a little lead wrist position coming down where we flatten it out and how that can promote more rotation through impact, giving you more face control. All right, Tyler, good stuff. Really like the swing. You got a lot of good things happening. And I think, you know, one of the things to consider might be to get a little bit more face control. And what's happening in your swing, when you come down, your lead wrist is, is fairly amount cupped or extended here, right? It's not really in this flat position coming down. That left wrist is cupped. And usually when you see that cupped left wrist, then you'll see the body kind of stall out a little bit. And then the clubs have to exit a little bit more down the line and then up this way. And you can certainly play golf like that. I mean, Mark Leishman plays that way, Phil Mickelson's played that way. So it is a way to hit the golf ball. Now, if you're struggling with some face control, then what you can do is you can maybe start to flatten that out a little bit. So when the club comes down, you start to feel the left wrist start to flatten out this way. You can almost see how that face is kind of curling towards the camera and not towards my face, right? Now, if you do that, that's gonna set the stage for you then to have to rotate more through impact, all right? So a more cupped wrist, usually a little bit more down the line, and then a flatter wrist, then you can start to rotate and get more out of the way, and that has a tendency to increase your face control through impact. So what I like to do is kind of set up here, feel that coming down where I feel the left hand curling towards the camera and the left hip starting to open up more where I get air under that right heel. Hit some iron shots doing that, rehearse it a little bit, and you'll start to feel that flat wrist in the rotation synchronize up and probably giving you a little bit more face control. So I hope that helps your golf swing. Now, it's time to go to one of my favorite segments. It's called the Pro Breakdown segment. There's all kinds of professionals here today at Monday after the Masters. Check out what I got myself into. Time for this week's Pro Breakdown here, Monday after the Masters. Lots of professionals playing here today. I got to catch up with quite a few of them. Here's what they had to say. Hey there, Travis Fulton. We're here at Monday after the Masters. Darius Rucker and Hootie in the Blowfish. And joined by a good friend here, Billy Kratzer. Billy, thanks so much uh, for joining us here on 18 Birdies, the Stripe Show. And of course, the Masters. <laughs> this guy, four time winner on tour, but also one of the best commentators in the game. You had the Masters app mm -hmm. and you had Tiger Woods for four straight days. So I want to, before we get to the leaders and the winner there, I want to mm -hmm. ask you your thoughts on Tiger. T32, driver not bad, but mm -hmm. what's your thoughts? 
Well, I'm sure he's disappointed with the performance and, and, and where he ended up in the tournament. Uh, T32, the way that he was playing, the way that he thought he was playing, uh, certainly he thought he would c contend, but uh, really never threw his hat in the mix. Um, the iron play was not good. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, by his own admission, terrible. And it got a little bit better on Saturday and Sunday, but, uh, you know, he was out. Yeah. He was out of the mix. He didn't have a chance to win. So when you look at the amount of putts that he missed, you know, you can make a case for that. Mm -hmm. I thought the short game was very much intact, but you make a good point. Three bad drives on the opening day, but other than that, the driver was pretty good. Yeah, it was good. And that was a question mark for me coming in was, what's a driver going to look like? He reshafted it mm -hmm. pretty darn good. Wasn't expecting the iron play to be probably as rusty as it was, but got a major under his belt, first time at the Masters in three years. I want to talk about your game a little bit. You're a rookie on the PGA Tour. You played the Web.com Tour last year, about 12 events in. Give our viewers a little bit of sense of the difference between the Web and the PGA Tour. Yeah, um, I would say everything is just kind of multiplied by 10. Um, you know, not only, um, you know, money and stuff like that, but just the way you interact between you know your your competitors and um, you know how you go about things on the course and off the course. Um, it's a lot more around you than you are around your buddies, um, which isn't you know it's not good or bad. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a lot of fun to be where I am, and I'm very fortunate. Absolutely, and you got a big schedule ahead. Your next stop, TPC San Antonio, and I've got your stats here, so we're gonna put them on the hot seat here. Uh -oh. All right, so so far. Strokes gain off the tee, 26. Pretty darn good, right? You got to have yeah. that's a key. That's a key statistic on the PGA Tour. Yeah. What's, what's up with this? Strokes gain approach to the green, 145th. What are you and Dew Sweeper working on? Yeah. Um, you know, a little bit coming off the web where you have to make a bunch of birdies. Um, that's kind of how you set your game plan is to make a bunch of birdies so you get a little more aggressive and, um, you know, like I said, your misses you know, your short side get a little harder um, mm -hmm. just due to conditions of the course. And uh, that's kind of where I've put myself. I've gotten a little too aggressive. Mm -hmm. I um, just uh, short side myself a few too many times and starting to learn um, over the next, over the past few weeks that, you know, middle of the green, you know, take your chances of making the 20 footer um, and just kind of move on, you know, save, saving strokes and not wasting them. So you're always benchmarking to some degree, but how much is it I got to improve in this area versus just I just got to believe in myself and the confidence factor that this is what I can do. I think it's, it comes down to one, believing in yourself. When you get an opportunity, when you start playing well, being able to capitalize on that, okay. you know, not, not being afraid of the moment. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Willie's got more experiences on tour than I do, but watching him at the Greenbrier finishing fourth and putting terrible the whole week, wow. that yeah. gave me that gave me confidence just knowing that my friend that I've you know known for five six years yep. can do that and then. So that, when I left that week, caddy and form, watching him just absolutely strike it for four days in a row, um, yeah. that, that kind of gave me some belief that maybe I could do that someday. But he would he would always beat up on me on the Wednesday. We'd go play, uh, you know, a random course near the tournament course that, that summer, and, and I mean, I never beat him on a Wednesday. So you know, and then if I was to play well in the tournament, obviously if he just beat me two days before that. It's, you know, that obviously yeah. shows that he can do it. But this, what you see here, we can actually see the drips on the on the ponds and <laughs> and whatnot, you know. That kind of stuff, man. But I'm not saying we're done with it for the day. Okay. All right. So there you right. had it. We're going to have some rain throughout Dude, the day. Dude, it's just, can we just say it's ugly? <laughs> it's ugly can we just out. leave it at that? It's just <laughs> ugly out. It's awful out. I wouldn't play golf today. Take me through your ball flight, right? When you hit a drive and it's a good yeah, shot. Yeah, I, I hit under the ball a little bit too much. Okay. So I don't get enough top spin to roll. So I'll have a little back spin on my, on my drives. So it's popping up. It's popping up. Okay. So if it's popping up, all right. So now it's, now it's my turn. I'm going to give you a little. Yeah, yeah you take oh. over. So we got to see what you can do about so, this. So a little, little, little side bend. Yep. To the right, and then and then we want to shallow it out a little bit, right? You want to come a little bit more around, cross, and over the top. Yeah, a more bit. around, a little more merry go round. Think swing shape. Okay. Oh, versus versus Ferris wheel. Right. So if you're popping it up, right, too much backspin, right, it goes right. up, comes down, no roll. That attack angle's too right. steep. Too so steep. Swing yes. shape. That swing shape's coming in too right. much. Yeah. So. You turned 50 in August, right? August, yeah. Champion store. Champion store, yeah. Give us uh, give us an update on the game. You know what, the game is, is really um, about as good as it's been in a long time for me. Really uh, good. My mind's in a good spot. Right. I, I realize that those guys are good out there mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to go out and play, play some really good golf. Um, you know, obviously, I haven't heard my name called in the first tee in a long time. So, um, you know, getting over that part of it, getting back into the groove of playing competitive golf is probably what I need the most. But, um, you know, 
Listen, I've been doing this for 30 years now, so it's just like riding, kind of riding a bike, but uh, it's going to take a little bit. You see a few putts go in and everything just starts to go. Uh, hopefully, there. just in a rhythm of, of traveling, yeah. getting in weekly, you know, going to the range, hitting shots, you know, good practice rounds, pro-ams, yeah. just getting back into that rhythm. I think that's the most important thing. You're going to do fine. Three-time winner on the PGA Tour. So uh, one more question here. You've played in this event, right? Monday uh-huh. after the Masters, Darius Rucker, Hooting and Blowfish. They do so much good work. Oh, yeah. 15 years now. Just speak to that. 15, 18 years. I mean, obviously, this is, is, is a morphed into this unbelievable tournament that it is. Unfortunately, we have a terrible day today, but what they do here, what they do for the community, um, you know, this is huge for them, that they all get back together and do it. The concert is amazing tonight. You get all the artists up there, and they do their thing. It's just great. Obviously, you can see the turnout, and um, it's great for Myrtle Beach, and it's great for Hootie and Blowfish, and it's great for everybody that comes here. Good stuff, man. Hey, thank you so much, you my friend, it. for your time. Good luck. We'll be out there. We'll be the ones all covered up and, uh, yeah. and nice I'm and gonna dry. I'm going to go put rain pants okay. on. Okay. Right <laughs> go put some pants on. We exactly. Right. Thanks so much. CJ, hey, loving the tunes, man. Good stuff. Rocking out in the garage, swinging the golf club. Lots of good things in your swing. I want to show you a couple things. The first here is notice the club shaft angle going back, right? That's the yellow line there going back. Pretty close to horizontal. I would say it's a pretty flat shaft angle going back. Now, when you come down, I'm going to get the hands about in the same spot. Notice where the club shaft is now. It's on a steeper angle, right? The red line is closer to vertical than that of the yellow line. So we're bringing the club down steeper than it went back, and I want to reverse that. You've got a lot of good things going on um, with your body motion. You make a good turn going back, but what I want to do is instead of this club head getting inside here, I want the club head to be a little bit more out here in front of you. And then when you get it up in this area, I want the club shaft to be closer to vertical. Now, that's going to set the stage when you come down. We can then shallow out the shaft, okay, and get the club shaft to be on a flatter angle coming down, right? And again, you do a good job with your body coming down. Look at this. You get your weight to your lead side, and you rotate nicely through impact. So we're going to reverse the shape of your swing. I'm going to get you to take it back a little steeper and then shallow it out coming down. And I think if we do that, a little more distance is in there and the ability to hit that nice draw. Here it comes. DJ, I love it. You know, these kids these days, right? They got the earbuds in, kind of attached you. Not you. You just come out with the full bow speaker, setting it up and rocking it. I absolutely love it. Let's get your swing. Lots of good things happening in your swing. And I want you to view this from the target line. So what's happening right now is when you take the club back, your shaft's kind of this way, right, closer to horizontal. And then when you come down, then it has to go closer to vertical this way, right? So it goes back here, and then it comes down steeper. So let's consider reversing that. I want you to take the club head back a little bit more out here so the shaft gets a little bit more vertical, and then you can start to shallow it from there. And that shallowing effect versus a steepening effect on the downswing has a tendency to help get the club face to square up better and has a tendency to help get rotated better. Now let's go back to face on here real quick. So from this view here, again, we're going to kind of go more up this way, a little more vertical, back down shallow. And you can see how that's going to really help the lower body kind of go left and start to rotate. So here we go. Going down the line, we're reshaping the swing. Probably going to feel like it's just a little bit of a loop or vertical going back and then shallowing out coming down and that really helps me then get the body to rotate and that one felt good there right down the middle man i'm on a hold it i'm right right on the face through the bag i think that's going to help your golf swing from the driver all the way down to the wet let's go to another swing this one mike sweeney good golf swing here Check this out
All right, Mike, hey, lots of good things here uh, in your golf swing. First thing, feet probably a little wide. I wouldn't go too much wider than that. Grip looks good. Like the space between the knees. A lot of good stuff there. I really like your backswing. I like how you let your belt buckle kind of trace into your right heel. You got good width and really a monster turn. That's, uh, that's really impressive to the top of the swing. Now, when you come down, I want you to pay attention to your head here, okay? A little box there around the head. And as you start your weight left, your head, good spot. And then as you start to turn, here's where you see your head really starting to kind of fall back to the right. You can see your head's really drifted a fair amount back to the right as you're swinging through impact and then eventually it comes through, right? So we're taking on um, quite a bit of right bend in the spine as you turn through impacts. So I want to show you something there that's going to help you um, keep the head a little bit more to the left through the strike. And then secondly, it's tough to see from this view, but it does look like your belt buckle as you start down, your belt buckle looks like it's kind of pushing in towards the ball, right? Uh, instead of your belt buckle kind of pushing back away from the ball as you rotate. So I think your belt buckle kind of moving in towards the ball, countered with the spine going to the right, um, kind of makes you look a little bit bottled up through the impact zone. And I think uh, we can clean that up a little bit. So here's what I want you to do. All right, Mike, good golf swing. Lots going on there. I got, I saw your target line video you sent me as well. And just as I thought in looking from the target line view, what's happening here on the target line is on the downswing, your belt buckle, okay, is going towards the ball, right? And then also going towards the target. Now, of course, we want it to go towards the target, but we don't want it to go towards the ball. So we want the belt buckle to kind of feel like not only does it go left, but it feels like it's kind of pushing back away from the golf ball as well. So what happens is, is when you start to come into here, right, then you kind of feel like you run out of room and then the left elbow starts to give way, right? So we're gonna go up here. I want you to feel the belt buckle, kind of feel like it goes towards the target a little bit, but then also pushes back away. Feel like you're making some room there, almost like someone's like punched you in the gut. So you kind of feel like you go, ooh, this way. And that club's still gonna shallow up back in here, but from here now, you've got much more room to turn and let your arms extend out this way versus your hips and your belt buckle running into the ball. So this is a common error. This is something that happens a lot. We kind of refer to it as early extension on the downswing. So rehearse that a little bit. Feel like you're kind of pushing back more this way. That gives you all the room. And then from there, you can turn and let that left elbow fold on the finish. So here we go. We're going to take our setup here. I'm going to really focus in on that belt buckle in the lower body. This should give you not only some accuracy, but a little more speed as well. And that one felt good. I had, felt like I had a lot of room here. I can let my arms extend and release back up the other side. Good golf swing. I think that's going to help you with your driver and through your back. All right, time for a little Q&A. We've got a couple groups here just finishing up here at Monday for the Masters once again. We are live here from Myrtle Beach. Come on in, guys. Finishing up and playing here at the Dyes Club. Thanks for joining us, guys. And we're going to have some fun here. Now, you know, like we like to go to the mailbag. We like to, to do a little Q&A. And people are sending them in email, social media. But I figured let's just go right down the row here. we got a question coming from here first. Travis. I tend to practice a lot of wedges in the summertime. I try to hit that knockdown shot that I watch you guys hit all the time. Show me how to consistently hit that shot. Okay. And you said wedge, which I like. These wedges have a lot of lock, right? And when you look at the best players, they're trying to de loft the face through impact, right? So they're trying to flight the ball lower. So even though they're, say, there's 50, 56 degrees, these guys are launching it like at 38. Okay. Right, they're not trying to throw it way up in the air. So are a couple. You, are you using 56 degree when you're hitting that shot? Is that the one you pulled normally? Or? You can. You can go 56. You can go 50, 4, 52, 50. But I always like to take the take your wedge, and try to flight it down. Try to hit a three quarter flight it down. So if you're between 56 and 52, go 52 and try to knock it down lower. Now a couple things. The lead hands key. 
All right, so what you want to feel like is the lead hand starts to kind of flatten out a little bit this way, right? So it's kind of curling this way. I was talking about that earlier in the show, not this way. Right. So you don't want to be cut. So it flattens, right? And then you feel like you're just going to take that and then you're just going to kind of bring it in and just kind of let it drag the handle up this way and finish into a little three quarter position. So basically I'm going here, flat, right? I'm going to flatten it and then I'm just going to kind of bring this through and let the handle kind of elevate into this little three quarter finish. But my wrist feels that way. Oftentimes we think when we're trying to fly it down, we start trying to hit down more, hit down. Right. right? You don't need to hit down more because that usually gets that left wrist more cupped. So we'll go flat left wrist and then I'm going to feel like I'm just going to kind of cut it off here to a three quarter finish. Right? And you can see, I mean, that's a 50 degree wedge. And that's just the, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you can see, like, I didn't take a full swing at it. And that, for me, is probably going to go around 115 yards. Okay. So I like that shot a lot in learning how to hit. I've got another question. Okay. I've got, I've got two more. Okay. Um, my go-to shot on the drive when I'm not feeling it is I want to hit a little fade. Mm -hmm. But I'm having trouble with it right now. What am I thinking about? Do I open my hips? What do I well, I think, you know, the easiest way to hit a fade is to to get yourself you want to obviously borrow left but anytime you're trying to hit a fade keep the ball position forward okay. right keep the ball position forward and then the key is as we're swinging down we're just trying to get the swing direction which is kind of the overall swing through the exit here more to the left okay now you don't hit a fade by hanging on to the face right trying to hold the face open we hit a fade by letting things swing more to the left and just let it go right so there's no uh, there's no hanging on per se right usually when you try to hang on the ball starts too far to the right, right. I've got to get one here you got a question I can Ball's see it. below my feet like six inches I'd still like to hit it straight <laughs> well <laughs> I know it's gonna go right yeah so how do I fix that so we're on a flat lie right now you know it, it actually if you if you stay in your spine angle okay, it won't go right because of the lie so what's happening is is when the ball is below, it will act like this. This is below my feet. Right, right. Okay. This one kills me. When we swing down, we're moving closer. Right? So everything's moving me down the slope, right? Yeah. So when I swing down, awesome. if I go this way, that makes the handle stand up and the face points more to the right. It's a push, right? So and most of the time, it can be solid. Oh, it's I just know. pushed, yeah. Right. So what we gotta do, what we have to do is when we start down, we gotta feel like we're starting to kind of sit back more in the heel. So what happens is now the club will start to turn the corner sooner, and that'll get the face looking more down the other line. Ball below our feet, move closer, face points right. There's your question. Thanks, man. Right. Great question, by the way. Happens a lot. Go ahead. I always have trouble with uh, shanking it to the right uh, when I uh, when I do my drives, and even. Is it my foot position that's the most important, or is it more the hips? Now, when you stay to the right, is it does it start right or curve right? Curve. So, a couple things. It curves to the right. So if it curves right, then chances are, we talked about that swing direction, going left for the fade, you've probably got too much going this way. Okay, so we've got to get your swing direction more going to the right. It's interesting, the ball's curving right, and I just said, you yeah, I want you to swing more to the right, which makes no sense, right? Because you're on the course, you see the ball curving right, and then you're like, well, I'm just gonna get myself going over here. Yeah, right, yeah. and it's, it, just, it just compounds the problem. Yeah. Now, on the course, that's probably what you should do, is play it, but in the context of fixing it, we gotta get you swinging more to the right, and usually with that, we've gotta get the club face better, so I would make sure the grip is to the right. Everything's to the right. Look at it. So the grip's to the right, left hand's over here, right? See how my grip is there? Versus there. There. So my grip's to the right. I'm gonna aim a little more to the right. I'm gonna swing a little more to the right. And as I do that, the face should start to rotate over. Think I can hit a draw on this fade win today? Let's see. I've been known to hit a few toe hooks. Let's see what happens. Well, it's trying to turn. Pretty straight. Wind's got it. That's about what I expected, right?
But that grip, alignment, and swinging would be good for you. Out to the right. You bet. You bet. This is going to be a tough question. I got. I, I mean, he just. What is it? Knockdown shots, like when guys are hitting a wedge in. Yeah. You see it on TV. Yeah. And bounce, they go bounce, bounce, bounce stop. Ooh. You're going to give me that question, huh? And they put it. I know they put it on the back, on the right foot, on the rear foot. Yeah. But how do they? How do they stop it that quick? Well, the first thing in spin is friction. Okay. So, number one, and this is this is proven. Like this is, you'll never see them hit a shot where there's anything in the groove ever. Okay, so the grooves, okay, have to be perfect. Number one. Number two, the cleaner the contact is from the ball to the face, that friction on the face is paramount in spin. Okay, and then when you start looking at it, it's actually a pretty shallow attack angle. Right? It's not a steep attack. These guys come in. You know, and it's it's like it's usually coming a little from the inside, and that it's a pretty like shallow attack. You see them kind of more up here, and not down here, right? And what's interesting is most of the time, from a spin perspective, they're trying to hit like a lot of times it's a little bit of a draw bias, rather than kind of trying to fade it, in, right? We try to fade it, and you can you usually kind of launch it higher. You can still put a lot of spin on the fade, but the ball come up higher, but it's usually kind of a slight kind of draw bias with a shallow attack. Now this isn't a great example here, right? But you know it's kind of that effect right there, right? You can see I kind of brought it in here like this, and kind of went this way. Kind of see how I'm doing that? Kind of almost like almost like I'm recruiting kind of more like low to high, or I'm sorry, yeah, low to high, right. rather than high to low. That makes sense? That's good. And that really cleans it up on the face. Yeah. One more. Right, One more. One of the problems I have is that I hit my irons low. Okay. They don't seem to, to get up into the air as much. I used to hit them higher, but now over the years I've just progressed as I've gotten older that I can't seem to get the ball up in the air. Okay. I'm still getting close to the same distance, but it's like coming in too low and okay. it's like skipping so, one. Interesting, right? We just talked about the low shot a couple different times. Now we're trying to add trajectory. Okay, so a couple things that address, okay? One is, check this out, I'm going to talk to you here. The first is, is we're going to get the ball position, play it up more up off the left kind of chest here, okay? And then the second thing is, is make sure the handle's not too far forward. Like, be a little more conservative here with the handle. So the handle's a little bit more in line, like this, with you side bend over here to the right. Okay, so don't play the ball back, shaft forward, head forward. Yep, play the ball forward, handle here, tilted behind, that's big. That's big in launching the iron, especially with long irons. Okay, and that'll help. With that, I would say to you, with that, what would I say to you is then from there, you could feel like you can kind of turn, you'll be a little more loaded here, and then you can stay behind it because you're already set up behind it. Okay. And that really presents a lot of loft to the face, so I'm going to get set up behind it here this way, right, ball forward. And that's my tendency. I kind of inch back too. So I've got to get it forward, right, and then see if I can launch it way up in the air. Look at that. So I see, I, and I went off to the right a little bit, but, but you can see how I was, I was behind it trying to really launch it, and I think that would be really good for you. Guys, thanks so much. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate being part of the Stripe Show. Thank All right, you, you bet. Good stuff. Great. All right, so enough of Q&A. We got one more swing, right? Show us your swing. This one's coming from Jack. Check this out. All right, let's get you ready for high school. You got a lot of good things going on. Love how you create lots of speed with your body, arms, and hands. You do a really good job turning away from it, and then you really get after it coming down through impact with a lot of speed. Nice balanced finish as well. So lots of good stuff. I would imagine you hit the ball pretty high, and the reason that I know that is a little bit of this scoop at impact. Now, before we get there, make sure get your feet a little wider and your knees a little bit wider as well. What I want you to work on is when you come down to impact here, you can see how you got a little bit of a flip right here, right? You can see how the club shaft is quickly 
going to get out here. And what we want to do is we want to create a little bit more forward shaft lean at impact. So to do that, I'd like for you to take the club back about three quarters right here. And then from there, as you come down to impact, I want you to try to keep your right elbow bent and your right wrist bent as you turn through. See how your right arm here at impact is fully straight. See that there, your right arm fully straight. Your right wrist is scooping underneath a little bit. Try to keep the bend in that right elbow right there and the bend in that right wrist. And then from there, you just simply turn through and that'll lean the shaft a bit more forward and allow you to flight the ball down. So I wanna show you how to do that. And I think that'll really improve your ball striking. Hey Jack, good stuff. Love the golf swing and I love the speed, right? And I would bet right now you're probably launching the ball up in the air a little too high. You probably saw that Q&A right there. Lots of questions about how to knock it down. So a couple things here. The first is, is I want to shorten up the swing just a little. I want you to learn how to hit a shot where you kind of take it up here maybe more to three quarters. I like kids to keep it long, but develop a shot where you can kind of take the hands up to the right shoulder and then finish more at the left shoulder. Think of it kind of a three quarter type of swing. Now, in addition to that, what I want you to do is I want you to try to de-loft the face through impact, right? So the left hand is gonna come in and it's gonna kind of almost feel like it's more bowed down this way, right? Rather than coming in this way like this. So you can see if I get the shaft going like this, I add loft to the face. And then you can see if I come in like this, I de-loft the face, right? So I'm trying to get this angle at impact within the context of a three quarter type of swing. I like the length of the swing, I like the speed in the swing. I just think this is a shot that you can develop at this age and learn how to flight the ball down. And it's a really, really cool shot and one that you can use with your iron. So here we go. So I'm gonna set up here. I'm not gonna swing full, but I'm gonna swing three quarters. Hands on the right shoulder, hands on the left shoulder with that D loft at impact and it's gonna come out low. Yeah, there it is, look at that. Nice and low, that's considerably lower for me with a seven iron versus swinging full, right? And letting it kind of go way up here to a full finish where maybe I would decrease that shaft lean a bit. And I would say I'd probably lose maybe just about four or five yards with that shot, so not much, all right? Really appreciate you sending in your swing. We've got one more segment for you here. Who's coming with me here to the back? Who's going? All right, you coming with me. All right, we're going to the bag here. We got 60 seconds left, all right? So any, which one should I, uh, which one should I go? Here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go mid iron, 60 seconds. You're getting ready to play. You're getting ready to play in a tournament like Monday after the matches. You're gonna be nervous. You wanna brush up just a little bit. So few fundamentals. Are we ready? We're on the clock? You know it. All right, here we go. 60 seconds. Check this. The first thing is, is the grip. When you put your left hand on, make sure that thumb's just a little bit over here like this to the right. No gap. Right hand covers it. Both of these V's towards the right ear, right shoulder. You can't go wrong with that grip. The second thing is, is you wanna brush up your posture a little bit. Get in here and kind of feel like, okay, I'm just gonna push my hip back, clean that up, right? And then I'm gonna make sure that my spine, okay, check this out, this is big. I'm gonna make sure that my spine is just a little tilted to the right like this, okay? So I've got my grip, I've got my posture, ball position is gonna be right up on this left chest area. That's really good fundamental. Now from there, before you go play, think rhythm, think tempo. Billy Cratcher had a great piece today, like. Patrick Reed, his rhythm, his tempo was so good in the final thing. Find that tempo, find that rhythm, rehearse it a little bit, get your grip, get your posture, and then from there, find that rhythm and go with that rhythm all day to help you kind of calm down and settle into these events just like this Monday after the Masters, Hootie and the Blowfish, Darius Rucker benefiting children's education, junior golf. I love what they do. They do it every single year. So many pros. I want to thank all of our guests here today. I want to thank the people that came in here right off the golf course for the Q&A. And I want to thank our 18 Birdies Ambassadors. This is one of our best shows. We hope you enjoyed it. We're going to see you next week.
back in Jacksonville, Florida. Thanks, everyone.